Now, let's talk media with Sophie Ellsworth, the Australian newspaper's media writer. Good to talk to you again, uh, Sophie. Uh, did you get to the tennis over the weekend? Just about everybody else was there. No, Chris, I wasn't there at the weekend, but I did go earlier in the week. And uh, look, I know we're going to talk about the ratings, but it certainly wasn't the year this year for Channel 9 because they didn't have those big names this year. So uh, I think their interest in the tennis in terms of TV viewers definitely felt the pinch this year, Chris. Well, I think they can blame uh, the previous government as well, too, because I'm, I'm afraid that they lost me when they banned uh, Novak Djokovic last year. I mean, it just prevented them from coming here and winning a Grand Slam because of an appalling uh, pandemic requirement. So it was good to see him win it, at least. Oh, Chris, I couldn't agree more. I thought the treatment of Novak Djokovic last year was nothing short of disgraceful uh, to detain him uh, and then boot him out of the country. It was just completely absurd. He was no health threat to Australians whatsoever. Uh, but we seem to have short memories here and he was pretty much... Uh, well received at the Australian Open, which I was glad to see because I was quite concerned that I thought the crowd would get pretty rowdy and abusive, but it didn't seem that way. And I think it was a, a nice and sweet victory for him given the circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at this little media insight, little clip that uh, I think Channel 9 must have got to. And this is uh, the engraving room where they're watching the result and working out when to, when to put the name on the trophy. <laughs> Two things struck me about that, Sophie. One was uh, he couldn't get the spelling wrong because that name has been on the trophy so many times. And secondly, uh, he didn't have to wait for the game. He could have put his name on there two weeks ago. Well, I think uh, he wasn't, you know, sitting through that tournament pretty. I mean, he did have an injury to contend with. But I think he had massive support there last night. We thought it was going to be a, a closer match, but it was over in three sets. And to be honest, Chris, I thought it was a disappointing final, but obviously an ec excellent result for Novak Djokovic. Um, let's get back to our old friends at the ABC. I, I always talk about them as a staff-run collective, essentially, because that's true. Now, under Labor, they, they have a, uh, a staff-appointed board member. And Laura Tingle, the uh, lefty host of uh, 7.30, or no, the political reporter of 7.30, is going to put herself up to actually have herself on the board. Can It just seems... So it just seems absolutely anathema. This person's got such an important political role uh, in the national debate. It's supposed to be objective, but we know she's very much a green left activist. And now she's going to take that to the board of the organisation as well. Well, it's really interesting, Chris, that she's put her name forward for this. It's interesting because she hasn't uh, asked for the backing of the union. Now, we know at the ABC they are heavily, heavily unionised workforce uh, and a lot of staff are not happy about this. But I think it will be a very interesting appointment if she is successful. But I think the problems at the ABC will continue for some time now that we've got a Labor government in power. The Coalition did absolutely nothing about issues at the ABC, in my view, uh, and it certainly won't change fundamentally. Uh, with things such as political bias, when they're meant to be impartial at the ABC, I don't think we'll see much change at all now that there's a Labor government. Well, there's a Another prominent presenter, Radio National Breakfast host Patricia Carvelis, has got herself in the strife over lack of a political objectivity. Yes, she has, Chris. She's posted this tweet last year on the night of the federal election calling uh, Indigenous Australians Minister Linda Burney a legend. Uh, Sarah Henderson, the Liberal Senator, questioned David Anderson, the Managing Director, about this tweet at Senate Estimates last year. He said there was no political bias in it whatsoever. However, it's come out in questions on notice that she was uh, disciplined over this or cautioned is the word that's being used, whatever that means. It's made a mockery of their social media use, Chris. Uh, it's either a breach of their policy or not, but it's not clear from this and it's not clear what the cautioning actually did, but I don't think it left Patricia looking uh, incredibly impartial, in my view. No, well, at least there's a caution. It'll mean nothing, but, you know, there you go. The pretense continues at the ABC. Thanks for joining us, Sophie.